Hello and welcome. I'm Colin Daniel from RiffNinja.com and today we're going to have lesson number two in a series of three lessons on guitar improvising secrets. And uh, this lesson is going to uh, cover the uh, chord progression that we're going to learn to uh, improvise over and uh, a little more detail on the scale. If you'd like to find out more about my guitar improvising secrets course, uh, you can go to RiffNinja.com slash improvising. And uh, I've got Riley here, my uh, faithful assistant, and in a few minutes he's going to play the chord progression for me. And I'm just going to go over for a moment the scale. I'm just going to wake you up to the scale again. In the first lesson I taught you this A pentatonic minor scale. What you've got to realize is that uh, it's in the key of A minor even if you're playing this G note to start with. Uh, some people get this confused because you're starting on a G here, that that's the tonic of the scale. It's not, it's A. So, and if you listen carefully, even if you're not good with the notes on your guitar, you'll hear three A's. An A in the sixth string, fifth fret, another A in the scale, seventh fret, and that's fourth string, and another A here, 10th fret, and that's second string. You've also got an A here that's in the vicinity of what your, your hand position, and it comes out of this one position scale. And I didn't teach you that in the first lesson, but it's just an honorable mention because uh, these two scales are really wonderful to morph together. And uh, this is probably what I'm gonna do in the end anyways, is use a bit of each. But this scale covers a huge, a huge spectrum. Our octaves, why do we want to know them? Because the uh, scale has one note that anchors all the other harmonies around it, and that's the tonic. And that's your note reference point for the key that you're in. And uh, our chord progression, which Riley's going to demo for us in a second, um, is based on or inspired by uh, Simple Man from uh, Leonard Skinner, and it's basically a C major, a G major, and an A minor. And uh, we add a little bass run to it too. And this is a little theory lesson here, so you're just going to have to uh, be patient with me for a minute. We'll explain to you why we'd be using this scale. Why we'd be using this scale over a chord progression that starts on a C, right? And there's a little bass run that comes in just before it. It goes A to B, and then you hit the C, and you're on the B, right? So I use A open, fifth string, then with my second finger I play the B note, which is on the second fret, and that's fifth string, and then now I'm set up for the C chord, and that's how we get the C chord down so fast. Now, I want to point out the tonics to you and make you aware of that so that when I get to the third lesson we can have some fun and improvise and you actually have an idea of where I'm going rather than being totally lost and looking at me and thinking wow what, what did he just do here so I'm going to uh, teach you a riff in a second but just before that um, I'm going to get Riley to play the chord progression I'm just going to run the scale over the chord progression you see, we have a C major to start and an A minor to end in the chord progression. We have half a bar of C, like if you count it like this, it's one, you can join me for this. One, two, three, four. So we have half a bar of C, half a bar of G, and a full bar of A. And it's counted one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, um, it resolves on the A minor chord, meaning it really, even though it starts on a C, just like our scale, even though our scale starts on a G, the resolve, the tonic note, is the A. So we're in, in, the, we're in the key of, the progression is in the key of A minor or C major, they're really relative, but I would have to say, technically, it's A minor rather than C major. You can call it whatever you want. We're gonna use the A pentatonic minor scale because, it is related to A minor, and A minor is the relative minor to C major, so it all fits in nicely theoretically too. And uh, now I'd like to get Riley to play the progression. I'll just show you that every note in this scale 
works with this chord progression because you've used your knowledge on the tonic of your scale, the keynote, right? And you're applying it and relating it to the chord progression that you want to solo in. So you can't really make a mistake when you do that, especially if you know where your tonics are. So let's just go through that for a minute. One, two, three, four. There's an A. Here's another A. Go through the scale again. Three, four. So I just followed through on the scale. There's another A, right? Okay. Any part of the scale, any of the notes out of that scale, okay, that's good. You gotta end on A. If you try to end it on the C, it won't sound like it's ended. It's gotta end on the A. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I think that'll keep you out of trouble. And uh, in the next lesson, I'll show you how to use a scale and add a couple riffs to it. How's that? So if you wanna find out more about my course again, that's riffninja.com slash improvising. See you in the next lesson.